Week two of the 2024 NFL season has now concluded and there's already been a ton of big surprises. And these surprises are to be expected during the first two weeks of the year. After all, we all know that what your favorite NFL team does in September doesn't matter nearly as much as what they do in November and December. Just ask the Miami Dolphins. But in this video, I will be giving you three teams who are currently overachieving the expectations we all had for them going into the season. And I'll be explaining why these teams are going to be real threats to make some noise even in the postseason as well. The first team that I want to talk about is the Arizona Cardinals. They had the most commanding victory of the weekend in my opinion after absolutely routing their division rival LA Rams by a score of 41 to 10. It was an all-out domination from top to bottom. But one thing I really liked about the Cardinals game plan was getting their fourth overall pick Marvin Harrison Jr involved early. There were a ton of critics who were concerned with MHJ after an extremely quiet week one where he only caught one pass for four yards in their loss to the Bills. There was even more concern after the game when Kyler Murray said it wasn't his job to get Harrison the ball. But very early on in this game, the Cardinals put any worry to bed about their new number one wide receiver. They started the game with a clear plan to find Marvin Harrison Jr. Let's take a look at some of his highlights. After after a couple of nice strong runs from James Conner, the Cardinals were just outside of the red zone on their opening drive. The Cardinals are going to use a sale concept to try and find Marvin Harrison Jr. here for a nice touchdown. They're going to have him on a post and their stud young tight end, Trey McBride, run an out route and try to take away the safety, giving Harrison inside leverage. And they could not have executed this play any better. The moment that Kyler Murray sees that Quinton Lake turns his hips to follow McBride, he knows instantly that Harrison Jr. has inside leverage on Tredavious White, and Kyler drops it right in the bread basket for the first touchdown of Marvin Harrison Jr.'s young career. And then on the next offensive play of the game for the Cardinals, they pull off an absolute beauty. Here they are in 13 personnel, so they have one running back and three tight ends in the game, which leaves MHJ over here as the only receiver on the field for Arizona. Now remember, James Conner absolutely lit up the Rams on the opening drive of the game, so LA is going to put six guys here on the line of scrimmage to try and stop the run. So now the Cardinals are going to run play action and pull everyone here to the left, and they're going to have Harrison Jr. here on a crossing route, and they're going to have Trey McBride run a wheel route. And watch Kyler here. He does a really great job of keeping his eyes on McBride when he gets past Jared Verse. Both Tredavious White and Quinton Lake go over to try and help, and when they do, Kyler turns his head and sees that Marvin Harrison Jr. turns up field and has nothing but green grass ahead of him. And he takes it in for a nice 60-yard touchdown. So take that to all the naysayers out there who were freaking out over a quiet debut from Marvin Harrison Jr. The rookie finished the day with four catches for 130 yards and the two touchdowns that I just showed you. And to add on to that, Kyler Murray looked electric as well. And this is the closest that he's looked to the 2020 and 2021 versions of himself. He's starting to use his legs again. This is another touchdown pass that demonstrated the reason why he was at one point regarded as a top 10 to maybe even top 5 quarterback in the NFL. There are very few players in the NFL who can make plays like that, plain and simple. For the past couple of years, this team has been extremely dysfunctional between firing Cliff Kingsbury to Kyler Murray recovering from a torn ACL. And that resulted in them winning 4 games in both 2022 and 2023. Which was a pretty big reason why nobody expected much from them this year. But now this team has some continuity. Jonathan Gannon is back for his second year as head coach. Drew Petzing is the same offensive coordinator from 2023. And Kyler Murray has finally had a full offseason where he can focus on running this offense and not rehabbing a knee injury. Now, what is it going to take for them to make the playoffs this year? Well, I can't lie. It's going to take a lot. They have one of the toughest schedules in the NFL. Obviously, they have to play the 49ers and Seahawks twice, which are both going to be tough divisional matchups. And they still have to play the Rams again later in the season when they have had time to get healthy. But over the next six games, we're really going to find out what the Cardinals are made of. Starting this week, they have a tough matchup against the Detroit Lions.
Lions, who are heavily motivated after a disappointing loss to the Buccaneers on Sunday. And then they host the Commanders in Week 4, which they should win. Then they go on the road against the 49ers and Packers, who will probably have Jordan Love back by then. They then come back home to play what has been a tough Chargers team on Monday Night Football, and then they go back on the road to play against the Dolphins. That's a lot of traveling against some tough teams. These next six weeks are going to show their true colors, but I have no reason to believe that they can't win at least four of those six games. They played against a superior Bills team in a hostile environment in week one, and they nearly came out with a victory. And they just beat the crap out of the Rams who had won nine in a row against them in Arizona until Sunday. The Cardinals are a team that can beat you in multiple different ways, but their bread and butter is definitely their run game. It's what sets up these beautiful touchdown passes from Kyler Murray. Can they keep running the ball effectively with James Conner throughout the year? And another question for the Cardinals is, how is this defense going to hold up? They gave up 34 points to Buffalo in week one, but then only 10 to a banged up Rams offense. This is a defense that gave up the second most touchdowns in the NFL last year. Can they play consistently throughout the entire season? And another deciding factor for the Cardinals, and probably the most important one, is can Kyler Murray maintain this level of play throughout the entire season? We've seen Kyler play at an MVP type level throughout the first half of the year, and then have a steep drop off in performance as the year goes on. If he can play at or around this level for the entire season, this offense is going to be fun to watch. Next up on the list, I have the New Orleans Saints. This team has been absolutely electric through the first two weeks of the season. Many people thought the Saints would be terrible this year. A lot of fans and analysts were calling for Dennis Allen to be fired after last season, despite going 9-8. and eight. Plenty of preseason predictions forecasted that he was going to be the first coach to get fired in 2024. I won't lie, I was a doubter as well. I believe that this would be Derek Carr's last season in New Orleans, and they would probably draft a quarterback in the first round to replace him. But none of that matters anymore because this team, and specifically their offense, has all of us wondering if anyone has answers for them. This was kind of what we expected out of New Orleans last year when they first brought in Derek Carr. This offense has a ton of talent between Chris Olave, Alvin Kamara, and even Raheed Shahid, who has established himself as a big deep threat. But they just didn't come together last season. The Saints wound up missing the playoffs and fired their offensive coordinator, Pete Carmichael. So they hired Clint Kubiak, who was most recently the passing coordinator in San Francisco. Clint is the son of Gary Kubiak, the four-time Super Bowl winning Denver Broncos coordinator and head coach, who is a descendant of the Shanahan coaching tree that has produced some of the best offenses in the NFL. And it looks like that change has been major for the Saints. I think that the biggest change in the Saints offense is that they have finally unlocked Alvin Kamara again. Last year, Kamara had what I would consider to be the worst year of his career. He averaged 3.7 yards per carry and only scored a total of six touchdowns. Well, this year, he's averaging 5.7 yards per carry and has already scored a total of five touchdowns in just two games. Remember what I said about Clint Kubiak? He most recently worked with the 49ers and is a descendant of the Shanahan coaching tree. That means that running backs are going to have a field day in this offense. Kubiak has also been dialing up the deep ball more and more as Derek Carr is averaging over 11 yards per attempt, which would be by far the most of his career. I didn't want to overreact after their big week one performance against Carolina because the Panthers are a complete disaster right now. But to go into Dallas, who had the Browns in complete disarray in week one, and to just completely dismantle this team, who has won 16 consecutive regular season games at home, is enough for me to say that the Saints are a little different this year. Now, will they be able to keep this up is the question. I think they can. They have a pretty favorable schedule, in my opinion, with their toughest stretch coming up over these next four weeks here, where they play the Eagles, Falcons, Chiefs, and Bucks. If they can find a way to go 3-1 and one over these next four weeks, they'll be sitting pretty because in the back half of their schedule, they get to play the Broncos, the Panthers again, the Browns, Giants, the Commanders, and the Raiders, which are all games that a playoff caliber team should win. It looks like under Clint Kubiak, the Saints have a real shot at winning the NFC South for the first time since 2020. The final team that I want to talk about today is the Minnesota Vikings. When we talk about the NFC North, normally we like to mention the Lions or the Packers. Even some people had the Chicago Bears making the playoffs. But everyone wanted to throw the Vikings out to dry 
guy after moving on from Kirk Cousins and drafting JJ McCarthy in the first round. And it was even worse for them after McCarthy's season ending injury in the preseason. That meant this offense had to rely on Sam Darnold, the guy who was just yet another quarterback bust for the Jets, failed when he tried to revive himself in Carolina, and rode the bench in San Francisco as Brock Purdy ran the show. That's the guy that the Minnesota Vikings were going to have to lean on for the entire season. But he couldn't be in a better situation to revive himself than in Minnesota. Kevin O'Connell is yet another descendant of that beautiful Shanahan and McVay coaching tree. And he's the perfect fit for Darnold to wipe the slate clean and prove that he's more than the guy who saw ghosts and got mono in New York. We're now two weeks into the season and Sam Darnold looks like he has legitimate franchise quarterback potential. The Darnold stock hasn't been this high since the 2018 NFL draft. And the hype is well deserved. He's looked phenomenal. Much like the Saints, I didn't want to overreact after week one because it was against the Giants who might be the second worst team in the NFL right behind the Panthers. But I'd say that torching this incredible 49ers defense is a huge deal. Outside of the beautiful 97 yard touchdown pass to Justin Jefferson, there was one throw in particular from Darnold that I believe won this game for the Vikings. This is third and eight with seven minutes and 41 seconds remaining. The Vikings are up by six. If you're the Vikings, you really want to get this first down here. You do not want to give the ball back to Brock Purdy and this offense with that much time left on the clock. So the 49ers bring in two extra defensive backs for an obvious passing situation and Sam Darnold absolutely sticks this ball to Jalen Naylor on this seam route right here. That is a big time throw that probably won them the game. The Vikings then kicked a field goal to go up by nine points with three minutes left and that was too much for the 49ers to overcome, giving the Vikings the huge upset in their home opener. One thing that I'm noticing about Darnold this year is that he doesn't look like a guy who they just signed in the offseason. He looks incredibly comfortable and confident within this offense and that's something that we haven't seen from him throughout his entire career. I think spending last season as a backup in San Francisco was huge for him. He's now running a similar offense in Minnesota and it looks like it's clicking immediately. Not only that, but the Vikings are by far the best team that Darnold has ever been a part of. Having Aaron Jones in the backfield and Justin Jefferson to throw the ball to are huge for him and when Jordan Addison comes back, there's another weapon to throw to on this offense. In recent years, we've seen guys like Baker Mayfield and Geno Smith revive their careers and secure long-term contracts as the starting quarterback. And if Darnold continues to play like this, I think he'll do the same. Now, maybe that deal won't come in Minnesota due to them drafting J.J. McCarthy, but Sam Darnold has taken full advantage of his opportunity so far. And not only has Sam Darnold been a pleasant surprise on this offense, this defense in Minnesota looks a lot better than expected as well. They have had both the Giants and 49ers offenses in complete disarray. Even Brock Purdy told Brian Flores after the game, your scheme is crazy. Flores is one of the best defensive coordinators in the game, and when you pair that with one of the best offensive head coaches in the game, things tend to go pretty well. They really need to get through these next four weeks, though. They host the Texans this upcoming Sunday, and then the probably Jordan Loveless Packers in week four, and the Jets in London, which is always a weird game. And then they have the Lions out of their bye week. After that, though, they go on a five-game stretch of some very winnable game. They play the extremely beat-up Rams on Thursday night, and then go against the Colts, Jaguars, Titans, and Bears, all teams that haven't looked very good through these first two weeks. The opportunity is there for the Vikings to make the playoffs. They will have to win some tough divisional matchups down the stretch, but given how Sam Darnold is playing right now, I don't think there's any reason to believe that they can't win some of those tough games. And that's going to be it for today. Make sure to comment down below some of the teams that I might have missed. And thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as it will go a long way in helping me create the best quality NFL content for all of you. I'm going to be doing more analysis videos like this on the channel moving forward. So if you're really into football, you're in the right spot. And as always, I'll see you next time.